Okay, I'm back with another free reading. I know it took me a while, but as I uh, wrote yesterday, I'm going through this Uranus opposition, so things have been kind of off. But I'm getting through it. It's not too bad. Thank goodness. Knock on wood. It's not over yet. And then when Uranus goes retrograde, it's going to oppose my Uranus again later. So, yeah, I just got to be prepared for anything that happens. And like I wrote yesterday, I got stung by a scorpion, which is very uh, apropos to this whole Uranus opposition because my Uranus is in Scorpio. So. The universe has a funny sense of humor. But anyway, this isn't about me. This is about Susie and Harry. So Susie wrote me a couple of months ago, and her email was pretty short to the point. And she basically wrote me saying, are we meant to be talking about her and Harry? And she said that after meeting him on July 4th, 2018, she started seeing 11 and 11 everywhere. So um, I just want to tell you that that 11 11, that's like a wake up call. Um, I also see it as like a warning sign. It's like saying warning, danger ahead, or maybe it's not always danger, but it can mean drastic changes are coming or some unexpected circumstances coming down the road or where it's just like look alive because something's about to go down. So a lot of times when I see that 1111, it's, it doesn't fill me with a good feeling. For me, it's like an omen or a premonition that something may not be right in the future. Like there might be something that you have to contend with that may be unpleasant. So you wrote me later saying that, so you wrote, I'm pregnant. Please let us know if we'll be good parents and how our relationship will be together. So you said you met on July 4th, 2018. So this is a fairly new relationship. So, you know, there's all types of couples out there. There's some people that get married within a couple of months or within the same month and they stay together for years. There's other people that, you know, within a year they're having children together and all that stuff. So the timing does matter. You know, the fact that, you know, you have only met him for less than a year, actually. It'll be a year very soon. You met him on July 4th. Did you meet him at a barbecue or a party or something? Fireworks display? That, that'll be uh, interesting. So let me know about that. But anyway, the fact that y'all met on the 4th is very telling because the 4th can deal with upheavals, drastic changes, surprises, shocks. It can also deal with separation, but it can also represent a solid friendship. So the thing is, I wanted to record your free reading like a few weeks ago, maybe even last month, but I've been so busy and then I even recorded it, but I made a mistake and I was like, okay, I can't upload that. So I was going to record it last night or the previous night, but then I got stung by the scorpion. So sometimes when things like this happen, I feel like it's for a reason. And another reason why I was hesitating with recording this, I believe subconsciously, is because you're pregnant. And if you see my videos, you know that my delivery can be rather raw, it could be rather harsh. But I do want to take a delicate approach with you because you are pregnant and I don't want you to be all stressed out and have anything to worry about. But you did come to me and you were rather insistent upon getting this free reading. So I'm like, I guess she really wants to know the truth. So. Instead of just going off of the top of my head, as I usually do, I decide to write this out for you. So that's why if it sounds like I'm reading it, that's because I am reading this. So let me just read what I wrote. So due to the way both you and Harry's charts are set up, there's a high chance that this relationship won't last beyond a few years. The baby is going to change the dynamic of this relationship for the worse not for the better. And this is true for a lot of couples, especially the ones who aren't married and when the pregnancy is unplanned. So your situation is not unique in the least bit. Now your birth number of nine and life path number of eight mean that you can't really rely on anyone but yourself in this lifetime. That eight will force you to be self-sufficient and single motherhood is one of the ways in which this mission can be accomplished. 
Harry's birth number of 11 means that his life is one of conflict, especially where women, home, family, and parenthood are concerned. 11 often produces love triangles. His life path numbers of 12 and 3 means that he needs a lot of freedom, but it also means that he is prone to jump blindly into situations that can result in sacrifices and instances of victimization. The three life path number can also pertain to legal issues. Now, when the birth and life path numbers are considered as a theme, it could translate into family court. So the family part would be the 11, the court part would be three. Now, regarding your chart, Susie, your Virgo sun is in quincunx with Saturn and it is opposing your Pisces south node. So the themes of desertion and abandonment are dominant with respect to men in your life. And also Harry's own Saturn is in quincunx to your son as well. And this means that he's playing right into that natal aspect that you have. So just to reiterate, you have Sun quincunx Saturn in your natal chart and Harry Saturn is quincunx in your son. So it's like you're doubling up on challenges and you could look at it as he's stepping right into that aspect that's in your chart. Also in your chart, Neptune is squaring your Venus, which reinforces the abandonment theme. Harry's Neptune is squaring your Venus as well. So he's playing the role of both Neptune and Saturn in your chart. So the themes of desertion and abandonment are strong with respect to you and Harry. Now I'm not saying that he's going to be totally at fault because it could be the both of you where you just can't see eye to eye and y'all have some aspects in your synastry that point to that, namely um, Mars, semi-square Mars, Mercury, square Mercury. That's one of the main ones because your Mercury's in Virgo, his Mercury's in Sagittarius. So he's not going to tolerate too much of your nagging and nitpicking and complaining and all that type of stuff. And you might find him to be very insensitive and attentive. Also, your Mercury is squaring his Pluto. Um, let me see. Your North Node. No, not that. Your Moon is in semi-square with his Neptune. That's another abandonment theme. So, yeah. Also, your Moon is squaring your South Node in your natal. And it's also squaring hairy south node. Now, the reason why y'all have these aspects like this is because y'all were born in close proximity. Y'all were both born in the same year, 1997, and only two months apart. So with that, you got to take that into account because you got some hard aspects involving outer planets and your personal planet. So when that happened. You got to be very careful about dating someone who was born within the same year. And in some cases, two years, some cases with Pluto, three years within that time frame, because that means that there's a good chance that person's outer plan is just like how it's uh, impacting your personal plans. It's going to be doing the same in the synastry. So that's why, uh, you know, just getting with somebody that's your age may not always work out because again if you have those heavy planets afflicting your personal planets and you get with somebody that's born the same year as you that's going to show up in the synastry so it's your you're like compounding your problems or you're making those challenges come to light and in the worst way in my opinion now in terms of tarot the cards are reflecting the challenges identified in the synastry so let me just talk about these tarot readings that I did. So in terms of co-parenting, I did a four card reading. So that's situation, challenge, advice, outcome. So the first card is the empress. That's you being pregnant. Second card is the challenge. That's communication because it's the page of coins, page of pinnacle. So that right there is reminiscent of your Mercury square Mercury. Just like I said, that Mercury square Mercury is going to be the one of the main aspects that breaks the two of you apart. Also, the advice card is the Seven of Swords. That's a card of abandonment. That's a card of stepping out. And that's reflective of that whole Neptune square Venus. So you have Neptune square Venus in your chart and it's also in your synastry. That's also represented by Neptune and semi-square with the moon in the synastry. 
So that Seven of Swords is not a card of unity. It's not a card of staying together. It's a card that's showing somebody is leaving, but it's also a card of secrecy. That's one of the infidelity cards, cheater cards. And then the outcome is the Ace of Pentacles. And you could look at that as a relationship enters a new phase. But I look at that as child support and co-parenting. It shows that the two of you can co-parent co -parent successfully, but more than likely separately, not together. Now, for the relationship, I did another four-card reading. So the situation is represented by the Hermit. That's your son in Virgo. The challenge is the Eight of Pentacles. That's your Virgo North Node. So your son is conjoined to your Virgo North Node. So with that Hermit card, the situation is basically where, okay, you need to know because you came to me for answers about this relationship, which shows that you have some doubts. You're not exactly sure. You need some guidance. But that can also represent that eight life path number that you have, which deals with self-sufficiency or where you're going to be spending time alone, quite a bit of time alone as a parent, as a mother. Eight of Pentacles is the challenge, and that can deal with consistency, but that can also deal with, you know, well, I'll get it. I'll get to that in a minute because I actually wrote about this. And then advice is the King of Cups. That's represented by your Pisces South Node. So that's like that opposition. So the Hermit is the Sun in Virgo. King of Cups is that Pisces South Node. And the Sun is opposing the Pisces South Node. So that King of Cups, that's like the Shady Grady card. That's like a man that, you know, will ghost you. That's very reminiscent of not just the Pisces South Node, but also Neptune squaring your Venus. On the negative end, because the King of Cups can be a great guy, he can be a good father, but he just may not be very content with being held down in terms of a monogamous commitment. Now, the outcome is the Queen of Swords. That's the single woman card. So, this is the relationship reading. So the outcome, Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords isn't married. She's single. So that should tell you a lot. I also did a relationship status reading about how things would be after the baby comes. And it looks rather bleak because Harry is represented by the Five of Cups, which means that he's not going to be happy. It can mean that he's still sticking around in the beginning, but only for the sake of the child. It can also mean that he's dealing with somebody else, but he's still in your life because of the sake of the child. Or he still has feelings for you, but he also has some negative feelings. Like the relationship has turned sour, but he's still trying to work it out, but he's not really feeling it. He sees you as the two, I'm sorry, he sees you as the ten of swords. That's you being fed up. That's you being basically trying all these different uh, attempts to basically make the relationship work but at this point if that could show that you're just done and it could show that you know he's looking at you like you're going to extremes like you are you know blowing things out of proportion you're overreacting the third card deals with the situation and that's justice and that could deal with court legal issues custody issues child support and justice can also mean that you know the two of you really just aren't balanced. The two of you just aren't in agreement. What he needs, because I did this from his perspective, that is the Knight of Pentacles. So that could deal with he just needs to submit, but that could be in submit in terms of the court, uh, comply with what the court is saying. What, uh, you see him as deaf. That's him going through a major change as a result of this baby. And that can show that he basically, he's not in it anymore. He's not trying to be with you. He, it's over for him. The problem from uh, his perspective is four of swords. And that could deal with, again, he's not really in the relationship, but he's still trying to be there. But that can also deal with legal issues as well, because that's a Libra card. So that could deal with, you know, there's some de deliberation going on in terms of this whole co-parenting, uh, custody arrangements, all that type of stuff. 
the strength from his position is the world. And that means that he does feel like he has some control. So that can mean that, you know, he feels like he has some control in this situation. Maybe he feels like he's taking control, taking back control of his life. I'll say that. And the outcome is the three of swords. That's separation. If you were to get married, that's a divorce card. That's a card of heartache, sorrow, disappointment. Uh, it could deal with splitting up of things. So that could deal with joint custody. So if you have any questions, oh, let me just finish reading this part. So you asked, was this relationship meant to be? You said, were we, are we meant to be? And my answer is yes, but not for the purpose you had in mind. This relationship will teach you some necessary lessons in being practical, discriminating, and fully conscious of the consequences of your decision making. These are the dictates of the Virgo North Node. So that's my reading for you. Let me know what you think. You can send me an email or you could post a comment in the comment section. I'm sure you'll see, send me an email instead. And um, hopefully, you know, the two of you can co-parent successfully. But like I said, it might take for the two of you to co-parent separately, co-parent apart, than actually being together under one roof, trying to make it out, make it work as a married couple or in a mo monogamous commitment. Because I don't see that being possible if you try to force a traditional relationship in this case. So good luck to you. I hope you have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy, uh, a safe and a healthy delivery. I hope you have a healthy baby. And if you would like an in-depth reading, you can always go to my website, rabina.com. And that goes for anybody else. If you would like a reading, you could go to rabina.com. And if anybody would like a chance for a free reading within the next few months, send me an email with free reading on the subject line. Include your birth information, that's date, location, time. If you don't have the time, that's fine. And also provide a detailed question and you just may be selected. Peace, many blessings, and I'll be back with some more free readings and also some other readings and I'll be going live pretty soon.